In this video, we're going to take a look at a few different operations that we can do with power series. So let's say we have two generic power series. One's called F, one's called G. F is the sum of A sub N X to the N. G is the sum of B sub N X to the N. So these can be different power series because they have different coefficients here. All right, so the first operation is what, do, what happens if we take the X out of our power series and we swap it with a K times X? What, what changes will happen? We'll just take that X out on the right hand side and switch it with an K times X. K times X all to the N would be K to the N times X to the N. So this is how you do this operation. The second one, what if you take the X out again, and this time rather than a multiple of X, you, you switch it with a power of X, X squared or X cubed or something like that. Well, again, switch this out on the right hand side, the X value with X to the P. And think about what happens. You'd have X to a power to the nth power. And in our algebra classes, we learned a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So this will be the sum a sub n times x raised to the p times n. And the last and final property is what happens if you have one power series added to another power series? Well, as long as the index values start at the same place and they have the same variable terms x to the n, then as you're adding these terms, you'll see every term that uh, in f matches a term with G. In other words, you have lots of like terms. So if you're adding these guys together, which, them, which are themselves summations, then you can take the like terms for each and combine them together. For example, the x squared term with the x squared term, the x cubed term with the x cubed term. And since you have x squared with x squared and x cubed with x cubed and so on and so forth, for both of these terms, then you'll have a common factor of x to the nth power that you can factor out and really just add the coefficients together. All right, so that's how you do these three different operations here. Now, I know what, I know what you may be thinking. You might, you know, might be asking, well, okay, why do we care? Like, what, what on earth could these possibly be used for? Well, we actually have a lot of good uses for these guys. So let, let me just give you a couple quick examples. L let's say somebody asked us to find the power series for 2 over 1 minus x to the third. And you look at that and you say, well, if that had been 2 over 1 minus x, that would look like a geometric series, but it's a little weird having the x cubed in there. And in fact, I think I did a video on this earlier where we wrote this as a what we called a geometric power series, and we did 2 over 1 minus x, and we wrote the summation as 2 times x to the n. Well, notice this is the same function as this with one difference. This isn't f evaluated at x. This is f evaluated at x cubed, right? Because you notice instead of an x, I've got an x to the third where x used to be. So how do we do this knowing that this is the power series representation of this function? Well, we're going to use this as a model, and we do the following. We would write this as the sum. Uh, from this was from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the n but this would be x to the third to the n which would make this the sum n equals zero to infinity of two times x to the three n right which is exactly what this property back here said this was actually the property number two that we're using right here. So these properties here can, can really help when you try to uh, find the power series for certain functions. Here's another one. Here's our last one. This is what we'll close with. Let's say somebody gave us this function here and they asked us for its power series representation. We have no idea. I mean, this looks nothing like a geometric power series. Uh, it looks like no power series that, that I'm aware of. But you might notice something. You look at this guy, and if you noticed that this denominator right here factored as 1 minus x times 1 plus x, hopefully you would realize that you can do partial fraction decomposition on this guy and actually decompose it into a couple of different uh, fractions, a couple different rational expressions. So here we go. I, I went ahead and did this. Notice that this guy would be equal to 2 over 1 minus x minus 3 over 1 plus x. Now, how did I get that? 
Well, on some scratch paper, I did partial fraction decomposition and I decomposed it into these two smaller pieces. Now, why is that a good idea? Well, let me just ask you, could you find his power series? Does that look like a, maybe a geometric power series? A over one minus R? Yes, I think we can. And could we find his geometric power series? Might take a little work, but I think we can do that as well. Okay, so this guy's power series is A times R to the N. And this one has a little bit more algebra to it than I think I'll discuss in this video. Uh, basically, in short, you have to account for this plus sign. It should be a minus sign. So we would consider this as like minus negative X, which is going to change things a little bit in the geometric power series. But in effect, we still have A, um, a times R to the N, but that negative X to the N separates into negative one to the n times x to the n. So that's a lot of details I'm not gonna go through in particular, that's not really the point of this video. My point is simply that we can write each of these as a power series. But now what do we have? We have the sum or difference of two different power series and that property that we had back here said that if you have the sum of two power series, you can combine these into a single power series. All right, so what we can do here is we can write one giant series and we'll have this common term and this common term being subtracted. And since they both have an X to the nth power, we can pull that X to the nth power. So this guy's power series representation is the very last line. And the only way we could have known that is if we had done partial fractions and then use that property that we just learned here in this video. So hopefully you do appreciate some of these operations that we can do on power series and hopefully they'll let you write more general uh, functions as power series using those three operations.